how often do you send emails? Because I, I don't want to bother my audience too much. So I'm wondering what's a good amount of emails to send. If you had something that was really helpful for them, why do you think it would bother them? That's true. If you, you know provide I mean? value, yeah. Exactly. Now, obviously, there's a line there. Like, you could send 10 helpful things in an hour, and it's like, whoa, okay, like, slow down, person. Mm -hmm. uh, so th there's a line there, obviously. But I, I think most people err on the side of caution when they should be erring on the side of, you know, providing more value. Mm -hmm. And with email, I think it really is a determination of the expectation that you set. So if you tell people, hey, I'm going to send you a weekly newsletter, and then you send them an email every day, you're, you've changed what their expectation was versus what actuality was, and that's not good. But if you say, hey, I'm going to send you uh, a newsletter every time I find something new that's going to be helpful for you, um, it may be every day, it may be every week. It's just as I find them, I'm going to send them to you. And as long as every email fits that sort of constraint, then people can't be angry at you. Um, and then, of course, over time, you can listen. If they, if they are too frequent and you're getting more, more comments like, hey, this is a little too much for me, then you can slow it down and you can change it. But for me, it really depends on where people are at in the system because I have built out this in intricate sort of email web where depending on where they enter from, if they enter based on a podcasting related tool like my podcast Cheat Sheet, well, then it takes them into a podcast related series of emails that then eventually get them to understand that I have a bigger premium course to offer should they be interested in it. Um, some people come in on my general list on my main website and then the first few emails are about their challenge and struggle and then it kind of works to determine, okay, well, where, where does their focus want to be? What level are they at? So I can give them more information about that stuff. So, um, you know, I would say once or twice a week to start is a good uh, starting point. And usually what happens is, you know, over time they go, oh, well, yes, I want to opt in to get more information about this. So yeah, add that to my emails. Um, and it's, it's, it's just something that, you know, you want to make sure that when you create emails for your audience, you um, try to keep it simple. Try to keep it simple. And especially with something like ConvertKit, which is simple to use, but also has some advanced features. It can be really fun to get in the, into those advanced features where you start to have like, people be able to split off into these funnels and then over time split off into these and you have this giant web. Like I would start simple. If you want to tag your audience, start tagging them based on like one to three different things. So for me, for example, I have an audience of people who want to start a business, but there's different segments in that audience, like people who have yet to even start a business. And then there's the people in the middle who have started and they're getting kind of a little bit of results. And then there's the people who are just crushing it, right? They're also following me. If I send a person who's crushing it, a beginner's guide to how to build your website, that's like, it doesn't align with them, right? Even mm -hmm. though we're all interested in building business, they're at a different level. So what I can do is, is go, okay, I'm going to send this email to everybody about how to build a website, except the advanced audience and the medium audience who already has a website. So only so you could do it in, in, in the only send it to these or, or don't send it to these. And that can be really helpful. So a good example is if you're a photographer and you start to understand like who has a Nikon camera in your audience and who has a Canon camera and a Sony camera. If you get like a coupon for Canon, like stuff, Canon lens, then you can just say, hey, I want to send this Canon coupon just to my Canon people because your Nikon and Sony people, like they, they wouldn't care. And that way you're not over sending them emails that don't matter to them. The most important thing is you want to send emails that matter to people. Yeah, is that is that why you, on the homepage, you don't really have like a free opt-in, you make it anyone who wants to join the newsletter, they can join, and then you segment within that first email? It is, yeah. And that, that one, which is on the bottom of the homepage right now, by the way, the homepage is getting redone. But um, currently, that's like, just kind of like a like a like a last sort of like filter for anybody on that page who's just like oh yeah I want to join the newsletter. Usually people are joining the newsletter on a more honed in topic elsewhere because they've landed not on the homepage but they've landed on a specific piece of content from SEO or a link on another website or mentioned on a podcast episode or something like that. And that's where I really drive home like the path that they're on. So if I create an episode about podcasting, you can be sure that I'm going to mention the podcast cheat sheet so that people can go directly to that and they get it and they, they skip all the process of like wh where they're at or what they need. They go directly to that 
set of emails that are specifically for the podcasting stuff that I have because mm-hmm. that's what I know based on the actions and what they downloaded that they're most interested in. And again, you want to start simple with that because you could literally have like a hundred different tags. It could just yeah. be this mess of a web. So start simple and segment your audience into just two to three buckets at most to start. How many funnels do you think you have going on right now oh, with wow. email? <laughs> too many. Um, too many. It's literally something that's probably gone a little bit out of control because you're <laughs> always experimenting with new things. Like if I could go back into time now that I know what I know, I would have just three funnels for the three different courses that I have and that's it. And just focus on driving more traffic into those and that's it. Versus we, we literally have like, four different ways people can enter the podcast segment. We have like two different ways that people can insert the, enter the, the mar, uh, affiliate marketing segment. And it's just like, ugh, it's like just simplify. 